What's up everybody? I'm Kai. Welcome back to the Dreamstead. Today we are going to be looking into one of our all-time highest viewed videos and answering some of your questions. Alright, so believe it or not, one of the most viewed videos, it is actually topping the charts right now of our most viewed video here on our channel, is the video outlining and detailing the creation of this accent wall that we have here in our living room at the Dreamstead. Putting in the shelves, putting in this uh, faux fireplace and chimney with the recessed TV and the electric fireplace here. That video, as of this moment in time, has 121,272 views. First off, thanks a ton for everybody who has watched that video. If you haven't seen that video, I will throw a card up here so that you can see that, uh, that video before you watch this one. Um, but in all of those views, there have been a lot of questions, a lot of comments, and I really appreciate that. I have tried to do my best to answer a lot of those uh, as they have come up, but with how many there are, I figured it would be time to just do a follow-up video, a part two, on the creation of this accent wall. All right, so I actually have a monitor down here just off screen and uh, working a little mouse here. So if you see me doing stuff with my hands and looking down, that's what I'm looking at. I wanna make sure that I'm scrolling through here and finding all of your questions in the comments here. So right now we are just, just entered May in 2021. This video, the original was posted up in December of 2018, so it's like two and a half years um, as of right now since we posted the original DIY uh, construction build of this accent wall. And you can see from the video to now, there are definitely things that look a little bit different. Um, the, uh, the and we'll talk about some of that. The shelves are colored, and there's obviously all kinds of stuff on them. We've been using them for two years. Um, so yeah, let me get the, the first question here. Some of the first comments here uh, are just congratulating us on, uh, on doing a great job. The thumbnail does not lie. Uh, outcome's awesome. Uh, incredible. This is awesome, man. I dig it. One guy said, uh, demolition ranch had an open carry. Uh, yep. And as you can see, uh, nothing's changed. The demo ranch hat's hanging up over there, so. <laughs> uh, so one of the so one question that is commonly asked in the in the comments on this video is if I can post a link to this uh, flooring that we used. So this is just a, a cheap tongue groove uh, wood flooring that we found on sale at Home Depot. Um, and honestly, I can't even remember the name of the, the brand. Um, but along with that, one of the questions was how did we attach these uh, wood planks to the under surface, the underlayment that's underneath here. Um, and we just used quarter round, uh, half inch, I believe they're, no, they're three quarter inch long, quarter round staples through a pneumatic stapler. Um, we didn't do any glue or anything like that. In hindsight, I think I would rather have done glue because you can see where all of these staples are. Uh, there's one right here, one here. Um, and yeah, so some of the, a lot of the middle pieces, we didn't need to use any staples at all because it is tongue and groove. And so if it had a piece that's overlapping on the top that was able to hold that piece in place, then it was great. We didn't have to put, we didn't have to put nails into every single piece. Uh, but I, in hindsight, I wish that I had just used a glue, um, would have made the overall finish a little bit more clean, I think. Um, Great job, love the look of it all, excellent work. Um, that's a beautiful climbing gym you built for your cute cat. Uh, <laughs> so 
Honestly, the cats don't jump on these very much. We've trained them not to, although um, our cat Coyote, who is a F3 Savannah cat, both of our cats are F3 Savannah cats, but Coyote is uh, a little bit, a little bit more energetic. When he gets angry with us, he will walk along the back of our couch and then jump onto these shelves but he makes sure to do a really dramatic show of it because he knows that he's going to get in trouble but he does that so that he gets our attention uh, and he'll jump all the way up there to to the top of this side um, this side here they very 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 rarely jump on these um, which is nice because we do have some stuff on here that's really valuable to us whether it's monetarily valuable uh, is kind of irrelevant but the stuff that we have displayed here on these shelves are to us some of our most valuable items. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely uh, important to keep the cats off and they don't, they don't go up there too much. So one of the questions that I had already answered on here is uh, how much did this whole thing cost us? And with lumber prices the way they are right now, it would cost us a lot more. But uh, a lot of the stuff that's underneath this is stuff that we had laying around in scraps and so I don't really um, I don't include that in my estimate of the cost and then also the TV the sound bar the fireplace uh, subwoofer uh, a lot of that stuff I don't include in that 200 bucks is pretty accurate to what it cost us to do most everything here since then we have swapped out um, the switch the electrical switch for the lights that are in these shelves which uh, it was a little bit more expensive of a switch so maybe 250 bucks or something like that would be pretty accurate Alberto nice job Vanessa Ross nice so Tommy says nice work where is the vent where does that heat come out of the fireplace and so in this particular fireplace it's an electric Fireplace so right now it's just on with the uh, the flames are on but there's no heat coming out It does have a 1500 watt heater with two settings 750 watt and 1500 watt and the heat vent is just right here And it just blows the the heat out into the room it does a good job um, You know most of the time we don't don't need it particularly, but uh, I love the ambiance that it gives and uh, sometimes on those cold nights, uh, cold evenings when you don't want to heat up the whole house a bunch but you kind of want to get cozy in here and watch a movie, it's fantastic. A lot of people like uh, Natasha Mitchell here have asked if I would come and build some of these things. Please come build me one. I want floating shelves uh, and um, yeah, a lot of people have asked that. Honestly, um, it's not that difficult of a, of a thing to do if you know your way around tools and whatnot and I'm sure that uh, most handymen and, and carpenters can uh, can do it so look around in your area try and find a find a handyman uh, to, to make it happen Troy here asks doesn't the sub shake the wall and make noise uh, because the subwoofer is located underneath behind inside of this whole column right here uh, I'll show you a quick uh, little snapshot of where that's at. So if you're cranking the volume crazy loud, it can, in action movies or whatever, it can vibrate some. But honestly, it vibrates our windows before it vibrates anything on the shelves or in this whole setup. Um, so yeah, not, not really an issue that we've had. A lot of people have commented things like... Uh, like Carlos here, really good video, lovely project, got me thinking of a few ideas for my lounge. So yeah, there's uh, a, lot of, a lot of people that have taken inspiration from this video, which is really awesome actually. Here's one, how did you wire the lights on the floating shelves from the wall? Um, so this one is a little bit difficult to just kind of describe to you, I guess, but the process of it was we had we had wire just stubbed out of the walls um, and we have two shelves on each side that connect directly to this centerpiece and so we had the feeder wires come straight out into those shelves and then from there all we had to do is make little uh, what 14 inch hops between 
the shelves through the wall. So it was really easy just to feed down, you know, cut a hole that was small enough to be concealed by the shelf, but large enough that we could fit the wire through and kind of finagle that a little bit. And with a, only a 14 inch little hop, pretty easy to fish that wire through, find it in the next hole and pull it through. Um, so I think in the video I skipped over a lot of that, but there is clips where you can see those wires just poking out of the walls. And so those just go from one shelf to the next and then another wire from that shelf to the next one and another one down to the bottom. And then at one of those points where there's a shelf that's connected into the centerpiece, there is another wire that can that could run that was running out of the side uh, to get into that shelf so it kind of goes into the middle shelf and then uh, separates from there goes out to the rest of the shelves and then these shelves are just built like boxes there's a piece of plywood on the top and on the bottom and then there's two by twos all the way around the two two by twos against the wall and against the centerpiece or the outer wall were mounted to the wall first and then I slid the box over it um, and then the other ones were mounted to the actual pieces. You saw that in the original video. So it gave me just a lot of space in there. So I was just able to wire nut those all together and then have them in the box and they're completely contained within the box. So I just wire nutted them, taped them, and then stuffed them in the box uh, as I shoved it on the wall. Side note also, when the wires from both sides run into the centerpiece, they get put into get directed into a uh, into a junction box where they're tied in and a pigtail comes out of that that's able to just plug into a, uh, a regular receptacle and I had that receptacle switched so there the, the power going into that receptacle came from a switch um, and that switch is located in the subwoofer box um, and you just reach down underneath and up on top. And I can just reach it right here, and I can reach that switch, and I can turn these lights brighter or dimmer, or I can shut them off or turn them on. But that is a Wi-Fi switch, so I can also control that from my phone, and I can turn those lights off just by hitting a button. Um, in my app, or I can make them go brighter, or make them go dim, um, because it is a, a Wi-Fi dimmer switch. So that's how we uh, how we did that. So there's actually, it's very very rare that we will physically reach under there and turn them on. Um, so the app that I'm using is the VSync app, and then the switches that I use in my house that connect to this. Um, I have plugs that are Wi-Fi enabled plugs that connect with that V-Sync app uh, for a lot of different um, lights in our house. And then also the switch is the E-Tech City Smart Dimmer Wi-Fi switch. I'll put link, a link to that as well as the little plug inserts that I use all over the house for our kitchen hutch we have a curio cabinet we have a lamp in the living room and then you could set a schedule for anything in that uh, vsync app and you can um, you can schedule it however you want which is really nice if i was a better filmer <laughs> at the time that i made this i would have definitely included a lot more of that stuff um, walking through that whole process uh, I also installed just a regular um, a, a dual gang box in here that has two different uh, plugs in there. One that feeds this um, one that feeds this fireplace, and then the other uh, supplies power to the TV and the sound bar. <laughs> Gus Showbiz here says this man radiates cool neighbor energy. Love it. Annette, awesome job. I just hired somebody to build one for me. Awesome. Who is this? Iron Man 80. Well done. I'm sure your wife appreciates your hard work. Um, you know, I like to think that she does. She's not here to uh, uh, to talk about it, but I'm 
Yeah, pretty sure. Simple life, OMG, looks amazing. Dude, can I pay you to do mine? Awesome job. Great work, I could use one of you around here. <laughs> and all that jazz commented, beautiful, I wish it showed more of the steps. And yeah, I wish that I had filmed more of the steps, honestly. Uh, it would have been, would have been way better step-by-step uh, -step tutorial kind of video for you guys. Uh, Billy here says, I'm building something like this soon. I was wondering how big your extension blocks were and the total depth from the wall for this centerpiece. So uh, this centerpiece here sticks off the wall 12 inches and the shelves protrude out of the wall 9 inches. Uh, DJ Gravity says, looks great man. Uh, thanks for the video. I'm an electrician and I really like how you use the puck lights and how you use the dead space in the shelves to be uh, productive for your electrical needs. Um, yeah, pretty cool. I, I you know, when I, when I was putting these shelves together, uh, it just made sense to try to, you know, build them like a box so that they'd be lightweight but still sturdy and have them anchored to the wall really well instead of trying to use some sort of T-anchor or something like that. Um, okay, so another question here from Calvin Cheeks. Uh, did you use quarter round for the, uh, for the trim around the edges? And if so, how did you attach it? So yes, these edges here, um, I used some quarter round that I bought from Home Depot for a couple of bucks, a few lengths of those, and I did attach those using uh, using quarter round staples, uh, the same as I used for this. And then I used a brown caulking to run the line uh, because there was a little bit of variation in the way that that quarter round connected to the uh, to this uh, to this flooring. Astro Woman, inspired for sure now. I had no clue what to do with this space. Somebody that's uh, hopefully turning their own space and making it their own. Uh, Kevin Mack, really liked it. Would have liked to see how you did the wiring as well um, as the holes for the lights. Also, he's wondering why I nailed in the shelves as opposed to using screws so that if I ever needed to access the lights or the wiring. Um, I didn't do that mainly because the puck lights are pretty much glued in. Uh, they're pretty much glued in place. Um, hot glue and that's pretty much it. So if need be, I could just pop those lights out and... Um, and then pull the wires through enough to be able to uh, to change out the lights for whatever reason. But they, yeah. So I can access my uh, my wiring from the puck light hole itself. The only reason that I think that I'd need to access any of that is if the light were to go out. Um, so I don't think I need to access the wiring on a regular basis. It would just be changing those lights out or something like that. Mark Chantel, great work, I like it, I want to build. With a thumbs up, nice. Samantha, can you come build mine? Victor, do, uh, do you have the material list for this? Awesome project, I'll be doing it soon. So I don't have a material list for it because I kind of just was building it by the seat of my pants. That's how I do most things. I get a vision in my brain and I just, I don't even put it on paper, um, I just, I just start building and I make I make pencil marks right on the wood uh, for how tall things need to be, measurements of stuff, you know, so I kind of got the idea for this, but really it didn't, you know, I mean my wife, she just kind of, thank God she trusts me because she just, you know, lets me go to town on stuff like this and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do, you know, a, a big centerpiece with a TV and a fireplace, you know, and we got the fireplace already, so she's like, well, okay. And then uh, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, do a solid shelf along the bottom and then stagger shelves up on the top and she's like, whatever. So anyway, uh, yeah, I wish that I, that I had a little bit more uh, foresight and, uh, and planning and all of that and marked out all of my pieces and stuff like that which basically means that underneath this it's not the prettiest but the uh, you know 
the final product and the skin of everything is uh, is pretty. So I guess that's all that matters, right? Uh, Derek, Derek Stinowski, this is Faya. Sherman Green, this is the most comprehensive video on YouTube about how to build a TV wall, cine wall. Uh, the explanation is so clear that I'm motivated to start my project. Thanks, bro. Thumbs up. Uh, yeah, I wish that it was a little more in-depth, but I'm just such a chatterbox that I just kind of like explain things overly and, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm glad that uh, that you thought that my explanation of this wall was adequate because looking back on the video, I definitely wish that I had included some other stuff. And see the, the, the next uh, commenter here, uh, Bonnie says, I love this. I want it in my den. Can you give step-by-step -step instructions? I'm a beginner, but I want to tackle this. Um, so, yeah, the step-by-steps is... You know, you gotta you gotta build a foundation of something. Uh, you gotta figure out the mechanics of it, and then you gotta skin it and make it uh, uh, make it look good. So, you know, foundationally, this is just uh, a basically the front of this is a two by six wall. You know, it, it's uh, it's got studs and it has some cutouts for different things, but essentially, it's a it's a wall that I mounted up just a few inches away from another wall <clears throat> and I just used some uh, you know some scab boards to attach onto the existing wall and then some little struts to hold on to the the main wall that again are not pretty at all um, but that creates the foundation for this and then the underlayment gives me something to attach all of this to and then making it look pretty slapping it all on so uh, and then figuring out the mechanics of it. How are we going to get electrical in there um, to all the places that we need to and wire it up to make it work. If you don't understand electrical, uh, I used to work for my dad who owns an electrical contracting company and we did a lot of electrical stuff uh, growing up and so I have a, a really general understanding of electrical and I can figure out how to make most electrical stuff work. but. Uh, if you don't have any electrical understanding, then don't uh, don't try and tackle that part on your own. You know, uh, I would just pay somebody. Uh, you know, that's a that's a relatively if you have all the materials and everything, it's a relatively quick job to be able to come in here and just slap everything in real quick. Uh, and if you don't know what materials you need, then uh, then you know you can just get them to let you know what you need to buy and and what they'll need to make it work. Frank, nice work. Jay, that's sweet. Wish I had the brains to do this. Yeah, I wish uh, I had a different brain sometimes. My brain just, like I say, I see it, I project it, and I just go. I don't, I don't plan everything out and draw it all out. So some of my family members, when I'm explaining stuff, they're like, well, you've got the vision for it. Just go ahead. Um, all right, Debbie here says, looks great. This is what I want to do on one of my walls. How did you get the wiring and lighting to each shelf? I kind of already talked about that. Um, I see how you got it into the shelf, but how did you do it without destroying your drywall? So, like I said before, just you know, putting those holes, uh, the, the studs in your walls go vertically. Uh, I mean, almost almost all the time they go vertically. So if you punch a hole into the dead space between studs then you have dead space to feed it through. This is an exterior wall, it's actually a garage on the other side of this, so it is an insulated wall, so there's insulation in there, but you can kind of just push that out of the way, feed it right up along the drywall on the inside, and uh, pop it out the, the, the next hole below it. Now when you're traversing, uh, a wall going sideways then that's when you run into the issues because you have all those studs that you have to get through so then you're going to be cutting holes all along in your wall I didn't have to do that because I have the shelves that connect to the centerpiece and all my wiring is in the centerpiece and then it pops out through that shelf so that gave me uh, a lot of space without having to blow holes through my walls Grammy, this is an awesome wall. I have been looking for uh, a multi-color way to do planks. Uh, 
Uh, somebody asked how much our fireplace cost. It was about 450 bucks, 500 bucks, something like that, uh, for for the fireplace. So definitely investment on there. Uh, but again, we we love it. Scooter Bell says, "Wow, great video, nice work. Love the final look. Wish the electrical showed more steps." Uh, but you explained it in the comments section for the most part. Thanks. Another question: Did you make an access panel? on the side or the front um, for the subwoofer and yes that's just an open side and the subwoofer fills it otherwise the cats would just be inside this wall all the time <laughs> this is actually a different sound bar than we had when we first made this video and uh, so we've replaced the the sound bar and the and the subwoofer so we just pulled the old subwoofer out put the new subwoofer in all we had to do is look at the specs make sure that the subwoofer dimensions would fit in that gap in the hole so this one actually fits with a little bit more clearance it's a slightly smaller subwoofer than the one that we had uh, before which was ginormous Castro's son asks how did you mount the floating shelves I must have missed something um, so I think I go over it in the uh, in the video itself but uh, uh, I basically mounted two by twos to the wall and then instead of completely finishing out the sides of the box all the way around of the shelf itself because I used two by twos on parts of it I left it open so that I could slide it over the two by twos on the wall so basically I have a two by two on the wall and then the box and it slid over it and then I was able to staple that in and attach it. Um, but I think it goes over that in the, in the original video. Okay, FW says, I love it, I'm gonna do this with, but use strip lights. Um, so that's another idea that uh, I have bounced around a few times is using strip lights underneath. And, um, you know, we found these, these puck lights uh, at a, uh, what is that? It's like a consignment shop. And um, and so we found them for a, a steal of a deal, couldn't pass them up and figured, why not? We'll just go with those. Um, they only draw back to these lights. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about these particular lights is that they don't dim particularly well. So sometimes you'll get some flickering at lower, uh, lower brightness levels. Okay, so something else that I wanna hit on here um, while we're talking about stuff is that in the original video, I talked about how we were going to be wrapping the, um, the shelves in a veneer. We tried this. Uh, the veneer that we got was way too thick and was not going to work for compound corners. Um, if these shelves were all like these bottom ones that just go straight across the whole wall uh, from the centerpiece to the, uh, the opposing wall, then we could have done it because we would have just been wrapping around the corner and along the front there. But the way these are where they have, you know, this edge, but they also have a side edge, the, the wood laminate did not, or the veneer, sorry, the, the wood veneer did not like to wrap that corner. Um, so that didn't work. So what we did, we just maxed it off and uh, painted the shelves. So we just painted them this brown and we love it. Um, there's a little bit of slop in there, but uh, you know, around the edges, it's not the, not the cleanest, but we, yeah, we really like it. Gypsy, did you just wake up from a nap? Come here, say hi to everybody, mostly me. Gypsy loves it. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, underneath this bottom shelf over here, there's a, a kennel here, and uh, Gypsy's kennel chills underneath there. So that's kind of where she hangs out a lot of the time. Jazz, what are you doing, Jasmine? She doesn't have a kennel, so uh, she doesn't get the benefit of hanging out underneath these all the time. All right, so that brings us to uh, the most recent comment here on the original build video. Um, from Lelena, she says, your cat is super happy, a great amount of exercise for him now. He is going to break all your vases, flowers, and decorations on those floating shelves. So yeah, as we talked about before, the cats aren't allowed up here. 
they get in trouble for going up here. They have all kinds of vertical space to climb in this house. It's ridiculous. We actually have a tree in our living room right off camera over here. I'll show you a shot of that. Um, that has three layers of shelves, three tiers of shelves that I made out of um, epoxy resin, a deep pour resin with, uh, with wood blanks in it. And those turned out fantastic, but that, so that's here. They could go up on the curio cabinet over by the kitchen. They could go on the kitchen hutch, top of all the kitchen cabinets. Uh, and then in our bedroom, we have a whole jungle gym all the way around the whole uh, top of our bedroom. That's ridiculous, but uh, hey, they've got it. And then they also have, we have an outdoor cat run for them that they can go outside and then it has all kinds of shelves and stuff. So they don't get tempted to come up here unless, like I said, Coyote is trying to get in trouble. All right, so that just about does it for this video, follow-up video. The next thing I guess is just, just a lot of people ask what we put on these shelves. So we have, you know, these Beautiful crystals, this amethyst uh, big rock over here we got at a California rock shop. Uh, we got some drums, we got some of my woodworking up there. Uh, this shelf here is kind of our wedding shelf, has the uh, vials from the sand ceremony we did in our wedding, um, along with a beautiful shadow box that was made by one of my wife's good friends that has like our original invitation and save the date and some information in there. Uh, some antlers. Some cool vases with all kinds of stuff. We got a Zen kitty, you know, uh, a uh, Native American ceremonial basket, uh, some fossils, a gigantic vase with choya sticks in it, just cuz, uh, some more antlers, incense, books, pictures, you name it. We just put the things that, uh, that we really love up here in our living room. So anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. I can't wait to answer the thousands of questions that will come up that are still yet unanswered after this video uh, follow up as I know that there will be some and throw those down below. I love answering your questions and seeing your comments. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's it. So glad you like this so much uh, and that that first video got so much traction on this and hopefully uh, if you are building one of these then let me know and if you're posting videos on it I'd love to see the things that you guys are doing so let me know all right thanks so much take care of yourselves everybody make it a great day peace out